Reigning figure Olympia champion, Sydney Gillen. Uh, another big year here in Las Vegas, came around pretty quick, yes. and the returning champ, not just one time, two times, uh, some faces you've seen before, uh, a couple of the top girls missing, uh, how's it feel coming in to, looking to defend your title for the second time? It feels amazing, it feels good to have Latoria back on stage, because we started this journey together, and I love competing with her, because it always gives me an extra push to just know, hey, you gotta be on your toes and ready to go, but even if she weren't competing, just myself, I really focus on myself, each and every prep and I know I'm going to bring my best tomorrow. I just want to always get better every time I step on stage. Yeah, you know, for the last few years it's been kind of, and, and certainly no disrespect to the other competitors, we've seen a, a, a three-way challenge for a lot of titles between yourself, Latoria and Candace Lewis Carter. Candace not here this year, but Latoria is back. Um, you know, and you kind of jumped the gun on my question. Obviously, <laughs> Latoria is the biggest threat to your title. And you knowing that she's coming back, knowing that she wants her title back, did that push you to train harder this year? And you know, how has knowing that she's going to be back on that stage changed your approach and your routine? Well, it didn't change my approach at all because I always knew we had lunch after the last Olympia win, so I already knew she was coming back. I already knew because we're friends already, so I knew she was coming back. So that was never a point where I would ever think to relax anyway. And I think once you accomplish something, you have to always stay humble, always stay motivated, and always be ready to get, well, I gotta say, keep your your foot on your own neck. And that's what I always do. Like, I, at no point in time am I stepping off the gas until I retire. So that's years from now. Now, talk to us about the dynamic of competing against somebody that you're good friends with. Obviously, there's a lot on the line as far as titles. You know, we get into other things as far as prize money, sponsorships, things like that. So it's easy to be friends with somebody throughout the course of the year. When competition time comes around, I mean, does the communication cease a little bit? Is it gloves off? Give us a little bit of insight on that dynamic, and we're going to talk to Latoria yeah. a little bit later. So we're going to we're going to hear both sides of this story. I always say we always give each other our space because like we're we're figure sisters. It's not like see my best friend. I don't talk to her every day. We talk every okay. week. when we need to speak, we speak. And sure, if I have a question, sure. we reach out. It is that simple. So like we always we give ourselves our space during our preps. We know we know what we want to accomplish, and at no point in time do I ever want to hinder her. And she of course would want to do the same to me. So we make sure we give ourselves our space. And when we get here, we're backstage giggling and laughing because the work is done now. There's nothing else to do. So why not just have fun and celebrate with people who you know you've come up with and looked up to this whole time? All right. Now, we've asked this question before after your first win. Obviously, coming in you now as a two-time champion, going for a three. We've only seen a handful of women in the past. We know uh, Aaron. Yeah, Nicole, Nicole Wilkins. Yeah, well, she had four, but, she they, had weren't four, but they weren't in a row. four, but they weren't in a row. Yeah. So as far as three-time champions, so we, we haven't seen a lot of three-time champions. So... And, you know, it might seem like a question you get asked over. Does, does coming in again and defending your title put more pressure on you than, say, last year when you defended the title the first time or when you won your first year? I think I personally have less pressure this year. I think last year when you're trying to prove that it wasn't a fluke after the first one, <laughs> yeah, you got to, like, get, once you get past that, It period, wasn't a one-time yeah. thing. I'm for real. Yeah, okay. so once you get past that, it just is like... I'm here. And then once you know that each and every time you have the potential to make history, that makes it more, just just a, a greater experience. It's less anxiety provoking because you just have, you're, you could, if it were all works out, you accomplish something that nobody else has accomplished. So that's what I look forward to just to make sure I just stay calm and everything like that. But I think, you know, it's going to be a, be a fun show to watch. And now speaking of accomplishments, if I remember correctly, last year when you were prepping for the Olympia, you were also looking forward to graduating from college. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Uh, talking to your professors, hey, I need off a few days from class, which is maybe a normal thing, but I'm guessing that not a lot of her students say, by the way, I have to go defend my Olympia right. title. You've graduated, correct? Yes, and I graduated. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit outside the sport. What do you have going on for you now that you've graduated? So I graduated and I went back to like LA, walked and did the whole graduation thing. And so now I'm basically doing PR for myself and public relations and just freelancing for different companies. Um, I want to get more into that, but I was like, I have all the time in the world to go into corporate America. This is the now for me right now, and if I can finagle my life around fitness and body, you know, 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 you know
Um, so once you just figure out how to like get it around the fitness industry and bring what my degree was into what I already did, it kind of just makes everything better. So I'll probably start just a little getting more into the fitness industry and blending it with the Well, you're one of the few people in this world that gets to get paid to do what they love, yeah. and not only get paid, but to get paid to be the best in the world at doing it for you. Now we know you have a handful of. Not a handful. We've got a lot of fans and friends here. Again, we're at the Meet the Olympians 2019, and obviously the reigning champion going to have a long line. So we're going to let you get back to your friends and your fans here tonight. Thank you for joining us. Once again, guys, David Bay with your two-time defending figure Olympia champion, Sydney Gillen from the 2019 Olympia Weekend Meet the Olympians. We're out. Olympians here with a giant killer, Sean Clarita. Sean, we're going to go back a few years. 2015, 16th place. 2016, 13th place. 2017, 9th place. 2018, 7th place. Definitely a trend going with your Olympia placements. Is this, a, is this the year we're going to see you crack up inside that top five? I said this is the year I'm going to pull Ronnie Coleman and go from he's gonna, seventh to first. He's, you're going to leapfrog I'm just gonna everybody. Just, you know, forget top five, top three, I'm going right from one. He's going to leapfrog. But in, in, in all seriousness, you know, when you came out of the, you know, the NPC, you know, as a bantamweight, yep. I don't, I don't know that we've seen any other bantamweight be successful as you have. And generally speaking, it's not something that we, not something that we, we really predict is even going to happen. Yep. And it's interesting because you've gone from an underdog and a giant killer because you're taking out people bigger than you despite your stature. Yep. But now you're a legitimate contender at every single show. We saw you win the New York Pro last year, seventh place at an incredible Olympia lineup. Um, I mean, it's, there's a very different dynamic as far as your position in these big shows. Yep. Talk to us about that. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just a steady consistency of getting better and better every time. I mean, the goal is always to be be on the Olympia stage in that first call out. Uh, last year, I was super excited when I was in that first call out, but again, we fell short and it ended up in seventh place. It's just a matter of, you know, just continuously getting better every year, working on the, the improvements that need to be made, and coming back and keep showing up. Now, sometimes what we've seen with competitors, and I'm certainly not suggesting that this is the case with you, is when guys go from underdogs to contenders, sometimes a little bit of that fire starts dimming, uh, via that intense training regimen, that chip on their shoulder that they train with that takes them where they started to where they're at, uh, can fade away a little bit. How do, you, how do you mitigate that? I mean, obviously, there's motivation because you want to crack higher places, but again, you've gone from underdog to contender. Has that changed your approach at all? Honestly, I think the biggest change has been this year uh, when Flex Lewis made the announcement that he's officially retiring from the 212. My fire just got, which is lit up. You know, obviously in years past, I've always wanted to be in that mix. When you have a champ like Flex Lewis on top, you just can't beat Flex. You gotta knock him out, and many of us have tried to all fail. When he made the announcement this year, th that was it. My confidence level this year has been his all time highest. And it was perfect timing because I had the full year this year prepared just for the one show. And all my other Olympians, I was doing one, two, three shows prior to the big to big show. This year, it was strictly just the Olympia prep. And I think it's the best, you guys, best I've ever been, best I've ever felt, and I think you guys will be the best I've ever been. Now, we talk so much about weights, especially in the 212 class. You know, with the open division, you know, people shift up and down five pounds. It's not as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Working on a little bit shorter stature, I mean, as far as weight comparisons, are we in the same ballpark, put on a few pounds? I know we saw you a little bit earlier saying we're keeping things under wrap. Uh, same weight, maybe a little heavier. We were 160 last year at the Olympia. Uh, this year will be no less than 170, 170. Oh, so 10 pounds of stage pounds. muscle, and you're about 5'2", 5 5'3". Two, five five two. Okay, so that's a lot on any frame, yeah. uh, much less a 5'2 frame. And, so. and a lot of people question me, like, oh, is that a good idea? Because, you know, how's your conditioning? Trust me, guys, cheekbones are in. I am, your face is the face. Yeah, the, the face says it all. I'm in shape, I'm ready to rock and roll. You guys will see legit 10 pounds of muscle added to my frame. Now, as far as conditioning, obviously the 212 class, known uh, a lot of years for having better condition than the Open. Yeah. Um, you're no stranger to giving up size. We've got a couple of really big guys in the 
U12 class. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hadi Chupin decided to go in the Open this year, so one less uh, large guy, but we have a couple of really big guys towards the top of the class. You know, we're not seeing Jose Raymond at the Olympia for the first time in a number of years, so one of the biggest mass monsters in that class not there. But knowing that you're still going to be facing some of these heavier guys, Derek Lunsford, Ahmad Ashkanini, uh, some guys like that, does that change your approach at all, or is it still business as usual for you? I've won four pro shows at 160 pounds. Doesn't phase me at all. Not at all. My weight doesn't matter. Judges don't care. Don't cold. <laughs> doesn't matter. All right, man. Well, I tell you what. Uh, it's a meet the Olympians, and we want to let the fans here meet the Olympians, <laughs> so we're not going to take up too much more of your That's time, but uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your night to talk to us. Best of luck this Thank weekend. You. We're going to be looking for Sean Clarita, not only to crack the top five, but in his words, pull a Ronnie Coleman and leapfrog the class and go straight to the front. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us. David Bay with Sean Clarita for MuscleAndFitness.com from the 2019 Meet the Olympians. We haven't really had a front runner. True. Now, you came in 10th last year. There's been a lot of talk about who might be the front runner for throwing out names, William, Dexter, Brandon, and... Um, Steve Kukla, I'm going to say, too. And Ruli. <laughs> However, you know, 10th last year, but, you know, going back to 1998, everybody had Flex Wheeler, rather, pegged as the next champion, but it was kind of open. Ronnie leapfrogged everybody from, I believe he was 7th or 9th in 1997, up to the top of the pack. I mean, obviously, that's the goal every year, but this year, being an open Olympia, I mean, has that changed your prep, changed your outlook, getting ready for the show? Uh, it has. I think... Every year, you know, going to Olympia, say, when Phil was doing it and some of the guys, you feel like if he's doing it, he's probably going to win it again. Right. So you feel a little bit defeated going into it. But this one being wide open, you're like, you know what? I, I feel like I think everybody kind of get a little bit more motivated, a little more fire in their, in their training. And um, I, you can see it in all the guys. There's kind of a new excitement. They're like, you know what? I have an opportunity. Absolutely. And for me, it's like having the opportunity not maybe to try to move one or two slots off, you know. It's like we can go from 10th to get to that first spot. I mean, so that's the mentality I have. It's coming here to win. It's coming here to, like I said, give me that first call out and we're going to we're gonna do work. Now, obviously, every year you're on Olympia stage, and every year you've been competing, you're putting in work, you're busting your butt, yeah. you're trying not to leave any stone unturned, but honestly, coming into this year, like you said, a lot more on the line, some open yeah. opportunities. That being said, have you changed your prep, have you changed your game plan, or has it kind of just been business as usual? Obviously, if you have a working formula, you don't want to stray too far away from right. that. Um, we didn't change too much when it came to what we accomplished this year. You know, I came into the Arnold and I felt like it was about 95%. We tried a few things and then tweaked a little bit for the Indy. And I felt like Indy was one of my best looks that I brought with fullness, condition, um, you know, just overall size. And I was like, you know what, let's take that, refine that a little bit more for the O because we kind of found that formula that works. And I think that's what's going to really bring to this stage a look that can be like, okay, that guy's a complete package. That guy has a case to be in the top call out if not the best one on stage. Now we all know the Olympia, a two day competition. Yeah. And so Phil Heath was one of those guys who we always call Peter McGuff, you know, legendary writer, former editor for Weeder Productions, always called Phil Mr. Saturday Night. Talk to us a little bit about the difficulties of prepping for a two day show. We you know the two twelve guys get to go tomorrow morning and get to go at night. A lot of the competitions, including the Arnold, the, you know, the, the big shows, the New York Pro, the Indy Pro that you won, one day competitions of prejudging in the morning at finals at night. You have five, six hours to make dietary changes. Here at the Olympia, you have a full 24 hours. You obviously want to be your best on Friday. They do 50% of the judging on Saturday. You know, Give us a little bit of insight about trying to make sure that you're looking your best two days in a row. You know, Vegas is its own beast just because it's, it's so dry in the desert. That's what I like to tell people. And, and it's it's very, there's there's pros and cons, obviously, competing out here. But being so dry, you know, when you're trying to manipulate water, trying to dry out, you have to be careful not to cut water too soon because it's so dry. I mean, you go from drinking two gallons a day to start tapering it down to one gallon, it feels like it feels like you're, you're you know, like you haven't drank in a month. You feel like you're in a, I mean, we are in a desert. But that that's one hurdle. But to me, um, <laughs> yeah, excuse me. But no, to me, um, where were you at? I just told you. Uh, talking about the two-day show. Oh, the two-day show. Desert, dry, I, I, I typically like, you know, 
the formula is obviously you want to try to peak for Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. Prejudging is where you feel like most of the judging is done. Um, but it is a two-day show, and you don't want to be off and create a case for somebody to, to move up over absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. So for me, what I, I, I like to, you know, I, I think I've kind of figured out the formula to peak on Friday, but creating a, a two-day show for us is not an easy task. I mean, it, you have to really, you, you got to go right back into your game plan the next day, and, you, I mean, you're a whole other day of trying to stay dry, stay stay full, and, and do all the things you got to do. It's, it's hard. Now, talking about the Vegas heat, you're certainly no stranger to heat living down in Texas. Yeah. Uh, I know some guys like to come to Vegas three days, four days. Some guys will even come a week or two early yeah. just to kind of get on that time schedule. A lot of people might not think it, but even moving, you know, two hours back and forth, I believe you're on Central Time down in, in, in Texas yeah. or on Pacific Time here, that can mess with your sleep, it can mess with your training. Um, did you come out here uh, a few days or a week in yeah, advance? Yeah, typically you come out Tuesday, uh, but normally uh, this year I came out Monday night and just to give me a little bit extra time to kind of get settled, give a day to, to kind of adjust, relax before all the festivities happen because they got us running everywhere between the press conference, the meet the Olympians, the meetings, the tanning, the, you know, I mean, it's it's a full-time, uh, I mean, you're, we're running around. It's not like we're just sitting in a bedroom eating and then coming up to the show. Like some of the smaller shows, those are fun because we kind of, you get, go back to the amateur days feeling where you just kind of show up, get on stage, compete, and you leave. This is, you know, they got a lot of other things, but it's, um, I, it's, I absolutely love it, you know, so. Wouldn't have it any other way, I'm guessing. Yeah, exactly. It's biggest weekend in body. It, it is, you know, and, and I know how to I know how to pace myself a little bit better being in my sixth time up here. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well I'll tell you what, we're gonna look for Steve to pull a Ronnie Coleman circa like nineteen ninety eight like leapfrog the pack, <laughs> go straight to the top, Steve. Uh, talking about 24 hours, you've been out here making changes. Yep. 24 hours, that's about we're the time gonna, we're gonna where you're going to be up on this stage right behind us getting things done. We're going to let you get back to your fans, everybody here looking to get pictures, a few autographs, some Birds, gear, so some Kuklo shirts. <laughs> but uh, we certainly appreciate your time. Uh, we'll you, let you get back to your fans once again. David Bay with Steve Kuklo from the 2019 Amateur Amateur. I was doing the Amateur Olympia earlier. To the real I got, deal. I just got Mr. off the amateur oh. stage. That shows where I'm at. This is <laughs> the Mr. Olympia. We're at the meet and greet with all the competitors. That's going to do it for us for MuscleAndFitness.com. Thank you, Dan. Meet the Olympians. I am here with your two-time Bikini Olympia champion and your defending champion, yes. Angelica Tashida. Angelica, Hi, back in Las Vegas for another great weekend. Uh, you're defending your title once again, no stranger to that. How are you feeling coming in looking for number three? Oh my God, I just, I feel amazing. You know, the energy when I get here to Vegas, it's just so incredible seeing my photos in all the billboards and, you know, like at the <laughs> expo. I, you know, it's just so special. The elevator and all the energy the that, I, that I feel from the fans, it's like just because when, once I start my prep, all the support, they, you know, this is what keeps me moving. And once I get here, I, I get to feel this in person. So it feels amazing, guys. I'm feeling like great going for this, like defending my title this weekend. And now you fans at home who haven't had a chance to make it to Las Vegas for the Olympia weekend, when she says the elevators, that might throw some people off. The oh, elevators yes. at the Orleans Hotel where the event is held, so they put giant pictures of all the Olympia champions and the top content, uh, contenders rather on the elevator. So when you come through, going in to check into your room, you get to see your big picture on there. Uh, so what, what was it like your first time? Because my first time, just at, you know, as a media personality, the first time I made it here, you know, you go to that those elevators and it just it was so neat. And something as simple as an elevator, seeing the biggest pictures of the biggest stars. What was it like seeing your face on those elevators for the first time? When I came here like seven years ago to compete at, for a model search just to be on the Olympic stage because I wanted to step on the Olympic stage. And I was there at the hotel looking the elevators, looking the champion, the bikini champion. And I was like, I'm gonna be there one day. You know, I, and I look out the billboards. So seeing myself today on the elevator is like, like, oh my God. And everybody get to see, take a picture, take a selfie, tag me all the time. So I just feel the love all the time. It's so, so, so amazing. Hey, well, that's what happens when you're going live. <laughs> now you were going for number three. There's only one bikini competitor who's won three Olympia titles, Ashley Kaltwasser. Yeah, Ashley amazing. is back here in Las Vegas. 
Uh, a little bit more pressure on you having a three-time champion, knowing you're going to be up against her this weekend? Of course. Not just having her, but, you know, like, she's amazing. She won three times. But she's on her game. She, you know, like, all my respect to Ashley. But also to the whole lineup. It's only 25 girls this year. It was super hard to qualify with the point system. Right. And, you know, everyone that is here competing will bring the A game. So, you know, like the competition this year, the lineup is just amazing. So my respect and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure in my mind that I did my best. That's all we can do. And when we step on that stage, it's going to be, I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy, because it's going to be tough. The lineup this year is like, hands down. Now, when we talk about the bikini class, now when we look at the bodybuilding class and classic physique and some of the other divisions, we have these perennial favorites from year to year, and we seem to see kind of the same names. Every once in a while, somebody breaks into that top 10 and they, and they climb their way up. Now, bikini is a division where over the last handful of years, we've seen new faces jump in and not just push into that top 15, that top 10. We're always seeing new faces squeeze into that top five. So I'm guessing as a champion, you always kind of got to be watching your back, not just for the competitors that you know have had success here on the Olympia stage, but I have to imagine that it's it's the unknown, like who's going to show up this year that also kind of keeps on your toes. That's why when I get questions like, oh, you know, like a, a big champ is coming, you know, what's the pressure? You never know. Someone that came, you know, out of nowhere can come in and get to the top five or maybe win one day, you know? Like me in 2016. I came in 2015, placed 16, nobody knew me. I came back in 2016 and got second place. So, you know, I came like as an underdog and got second place. So nobody expected that, you know? Moved so into it, that it first can happen. Move. Yeah, with bikini, yeah, I moved from 16. Actually, it's it was second to last I placed in 2015. It was 32 girls, so, you know, and then one year later, I made all the improvements, you know, I worked in all the feedbacks, I came back, I got second. You know, so you never know. Absolutely. Now, obviously, making that sort of jump from placing towards the bottom of the pack to second, there had to have been some changes in your training, your diet regimen. Now, when we're talking about bikini competitions, when you've won an Olympia title and then you repeat, I have to imagine that the plan is to kind of put together a similar look, a, a package as they would call it in this industry. But at the same time, you know, as competitors, we're always trying to go into the gym, make changes, make improvements. How do you focus on making improvements from year to year when the look that you brought the previous years, you know, the judges are telling you, that's what we're looking for. What's, what does the game plan look like in the off season? You know, when you're already the champion. You know, uh, like I was the champion, but I always ask for the judge's feedback because nobody's perfect. This is bodybuilding. We always be trying to improve. Always be trying to to come in better every year. So after the shows, even though you know I won, I always email the judge and ask for feedback for the next year. What can I do? What can I do better? So for this year, the, the feedback was to bring my upper body up a little more. So you know, like just a little, just slight change. So my whole, the whole year was working a lot on my upper body. And uh, also the glutes coming a little tighter, just a little. Because bikini, you gotta have the balance. You cannot be too tight and you cannot be too soft. So you gotta know how to play with that, you know, and bring the balance curvy, but conditioning physique. So I think for this year, I'm excited for this package. All right, well, I can tell you some other people are excited. All the fans here waiting in line, waiting for us to wrap this up. Uh, so guys, you know, we're gonna wrap this up here pretty quick. We certainly appreciate your time as always, always being so gracious with the media and your fans as well. So that's gonna do it from us. We'd like to wish you the best of luck in this upcoming weekend going for title number three. But uh, we're gonna wrap this up once again, guys. David Bay with your two-time defending Bikini Olympia champion, Angelica Teixeira from the 2019 Olympia meet the Olympians, that's going to do it for us. Thanks. Aw, thank you. All right, thank you guys.